and thank him for giving us the desire to be here and to help us know him as he really is and help us to not be discouraged by the things that are happening in the earth plane because they are foretold and it is supposed to be and it is all Yahweh's plan. Let us just hang tight and stay go coming into class and knowing more. Let us all say hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, definitely my favorite one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by A.B. Trainer. Matthew 24. And Joshua went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Joshua said unto them, See not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the age? And Joshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise upon, or, or, excuse me, for nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of the plagues. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because apostasy shall abound, the love of many shall grow cold. For he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And the glad tidings of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea, flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, not ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the Messiah, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will be eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. 
when its branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, that generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving up marriages, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your king doth come. But know this, that if the good good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master hath made ruler over his household, to give them bread in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his master, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My master delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the master of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that was Matthew 24. Hallelujah. 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 Can we from Rhode Island? Um, and Nancy? And that um, the Republican Okay. All right, because we thought you were, you know, for your first time visitors, you're just visiting Rockland. But welcome. Thank you. Since I'm up here, I might as well announce the first speaker will be Tara Burley. Good evening. Oh, okay. So I ain't always using this. That was a surprise. <laughs> that was going to be reading. Um, well, nevertheless, uh, oh, it is definitely any time that uh, I get to say anything about um, this teaching. It is a um, pleasure and it's a blessing just to be able to have anything to say about our creator um, because uh, everybody doesn't, you know, see this teaching and it, it is a blessing to be able to see anything that Yahshua has um, shown us. But um, let me see what I was, uh, I don't know if I have anything particular on my mind, but um, I was thinking about um, before I came to class, um, I had went to the dentist and I you know, had a root canal and I was like, well, I'm in pain. I don't know if I'm going to go. But then something came in my head was like, you know, all of us are in pain. You know, yeah, somebody yeah. got something <laughs> going on, you know, in their life. So that's no excuse. Get to class. And so <laughs> I'm glad I was obedient and I came to class because, you know, sometimes, you know, and Mr. Nick would be in your ear. Oh, you can't talk, but I can talk. And I had two root canals done, so I'm thankful, you know, Yahshua took care of that. But um, let's go to, uh, well, let me, uh, I guess go to the scripture reading first. Okay, Matthew 24, mm -hmm. starting at 1. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Yahshua said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Mm-hmm. 
keep uh, and, going. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came upon him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of that coming and the end of the world? And a lot of, I'm um, some stopping right there. Um, right now, um, it's a lot of things that's been going on in the earth plane. And it's just, it keeps repeating and repeating and repeating. I remember um, someone said, um, every time a major holiday is coming on, watch the news. Right. And I didn't get that until, you know, after what years and years come to class, it's been like that every single year. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't skip a beat. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that we are at the end times yeah. because it's just back to back to back, mm -hmm. the events that's been going on. And um, here it's telling you to, um, Keep where is it? You just uh, read. I finished uh, three. Tell us three. when these things shall be, and what shall be the sign of that coming and of the end of the world. I know um, a lot of people. They'll go to uh, like the um, the psychics, or they'll they'll use like the horoscope and telescope mm -hmm. and stuff to try to determine, you know, what's going on. Yeah. And they're still not looking at the picture. They still don't get it. And Yahshua is is telling us like, okay, it's not. Is, is these signs also, but keep your eyes on Yahshua. You know what I mean? It's not just, oh, um, the moon is darkened or the eclipse and stuff like that. That's what they look for. But Yahshua has given us a definite um, signs. It just not just these times, just every single day. He has given us a witness, you know, of things of him. And to watch and to be, not be, uh, give me that uh, scripture where it says, um, be not be slothful or what is it um slack, slack. yeah yeah, yeah it, I, I think is uh he he was saying really don't be lacking or don't uh oh gosh what's the word don't don't slack or don't be lazy when it comes down to this gospel you know just just you, you we still got to fight we still got to to keep our finger in the book yeah you know, we see these things going on, but Yahshua is telling us to, to look and be ready. Romans 12 and 11. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving Yahweh. Can we get that, that word, look up that definition of slothful? He's saying not be slothful in in business and no. what did it say? Fervent uh, in spirit. Fervent in spirit. Mm -hmm. Serving Yahweh. Serving Yahweh. Let's get that um, definition. Because we have to be on our we have to be on our toes, and you know that Mister of Nick is gonna try to. He comes at at, at the time we don't even expect, you know. So we have to be diligent and come into class and diligent in seeking Yahshua. Lazy. Lazy. Slothful um, or sloth. S slothful is lazy. Lazy. Characterized by sloth, which is um, disinclination to work or exert oneself. Laziness, idleness, slowness. Mm -hmm. Slowness. Yep. Yep. So, so that, I mean, Yahshua was telling us not to be lazy and, you know, just keep Yahshua on your heart and mind every single day because you never know. Keep reading with the scripture reading. For, and Yahshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Mm -hmm. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah. And, and we see that every men. single day someone's coming saying that they are the Messiah, they are, you know, the one, and, you know, a lot of people look to the Pope and think that he is the one, so we see all these things going on. I mean, it. this chapter right here, it speaks for itself. Yes. I mean, we, we, <laughs> so many witnesses right now unto what's going on in the earth plane, and this chapter is just, is hitting right on. So, um, I don't think I, I want to go because, I mean, it's, we see it every day. We see it in the news. Mm -hmm. But it was, um, let's go to First Kings. It was something I was uh, reading that was on my mind. Um, I was reading about uh, Jezebel, that uh, woman, because I never, I never really went into that and understood. The only thing I knew of that 
named Jezebel was growing up in a church. They just said that she was like a whore. <laughs> Uh, 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 you know, fast woman or a woman that seduces. But I was thinking about that, and um, it's more to that, to that spirit of that woman because when you look at that, you when I look at that, and I was like, well, it's oh my goodness, that spirit is not just physical. Like I mean, that mm -hmm. manifestation was not just physical. Um, spiritually, when you talk about that whore or whatever. You talking about the church? You talking about you know something that we basically can I put it this way without being so? <laughs> um, a horse stands on the corner, right? And she seduces her men or wh whoever she wants to seduce. So by her dressing up and everything, that's how she get to come. And I was thinking about um, how. The um, Jehovah Witness and the people that um, they go out and they get um, people to, um, I guess, not prophesize, but to knock on the doors of the neighborhood and they stand on the in the grocery stores and stuff like that. And they try to and they get you to and they invite you to their church mm -hmm. and they have to go out and they have to seek people yeah. to come to their church. Mm -hmm. And they, it's, it's by their minister, which is representation of a pimp. He goes and he sends his people to go and get more people to come to the church. And it's just like, it's, Yahweh is showing me these things and, and uh, of this, this spirit of this woman. And I was reading um, in First Kings, but it was, it's, it's just, let's just go there because it's so much. I'm trying to lead it up to it, but. First Kings 16. First Kings and, uh, 16, let me see. First Kings no, First Kings and uh, 18, 18, yes. 18 and 4. Yeah. First Kings 18 and 4. Or start at 1? Start at 1. Okay, First Kings 18 and 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of Yahweh came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab and I will send rain upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared Yahweh greatly. Mm -hmm. For it was so, when Jezebel cut off the prophets of Yahweh, that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land unto all fountains of water, and unto all brooks peradventure, we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face and said, Art thou that my master Elijah? Mm -hmm. And he answered him, I am. Go tell thy master, behold, Elijah is here. And he said, What have I sinned, that thou wouldst deliver thy servant into the land of Ahab to slay me? As Yahweh thy Elohim liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my master hath not sent to seek thee. Mm -hmm. And when they said, He is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. And now thou sayest, Go tell thy master, Behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of Yahweh shall carry thee whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear Yahweh from my youth. Was it not told my master what... I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. How I hid a hundred men of the of the mat, of Yahweh's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. I was thinking about that um, when when Jezebel slew the prophets of Yahweh. Okay, we know that um, they when when we preach and we go out and we um, tell people about this gospel, they don't want to hear it. You know, you know, it's it's hard for the, for them to understand that. But when I think about this woman Jezebel, I'm thinking about the 
the church. I'm thinking about, uh, and we, we don't even have to go to the church. I'm thinking about even within the idea of Mark, what's going on and what's, what's in the spirit of this woman, what's manifesting within this woman. And um, keep reading. I'm at 14, um, 1 Kings 18, 14. And now thou sayest, go tell thy master, behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, as Yahweh of hosts liveth before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Go to 18. 18. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel. Um, okay, there was a question. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, and he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that you have forsaken the commandments of Yahweh, and thou hast followed Balaam. Okay, so we know that <laughs> right here is a is um, Yahweh overturns and overturns. Like I said, even with the uh, in Matthew twenty fourth chapter, um, he's giving us witnesses after witnesses, and like I said, every year is something. But even here, back in the prophets. Um, we know that Israel was um, given that Ten Commandment law. We know that Yahweh gave them witness after witness mm -hmm. and um, showed them after he led them out of the land of Egypt. And um, then they went into the wilderness and, you know, they complained and they murmured. And they stayed there for 40 years. And Yahweh, um, you know, gave them uh, manna. Their shoes never wore off. And, you know, Yahweh mm -hmm. just continually take care of them even though they were um, in disbelief and even when they went up to Canaan's land um, they went into bondage and they uh, cried out to Yahweh and Yahweh delivered them and they went back to doing what they wanted to do and Yahweh delivered again so he did I believe well, like seven times they went into uh, bondage mm -hmm. and um, so this is a prophet here but then you um, see here that they went back because um, of this woman Jezebel she led them to serve Balaam mm -hmm. and you have to be careful because like I said you have to be you have to stand on your toes because that mystery of iniquity will try to use anything mm -hmm. to get you to keep your eyes off of Yahweh yeah. um keep reading okay we're at um 19. 19 now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal 450 and the prophets of the groves 400 which eat at Jezebel's table. Mm -hmm. So it's 450 prophets there. Keep going. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt thee between two opinions? If Yahweh be Elohim, follow him. Mm -hmm. But if Baal, then follow him. And um, Moses said the same thing when they went <laughs> up here in the, um, when they were in the um, in uh, the wilderness and they worshiped Baal there. They built their golden calf and he said, um, those who who follow Yahweh, he drew a line. Uh, what? Go, let's get that. Still, hold your finger right there. Let's get that because I don't want to misquote it. You can't worship two gods. You can't love Yah say you love Yahweh or love Yahshua and and uh, worship something else or or not be either you're gonna love one or you're gonna hate the other one. Sixty one. Alright, sixteen twenty eight. Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that Yahweh has sent me to do all these works. Mm -hmm. For I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then Yahweh hath not sent me. But if Yahweh make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth... Is that where, where he drew the line in the sand after they built the um, golden calf? I don't yeah. know. That's Is that... That's it? Is it coming up? Well, he, he told them to uh, together... Um, and actually draw a line in the sand, but, uh, um, okay, let's start 24. 24. Speak mm -hmm. unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Datham, and Eberim. Mm -hmm. And Moses rose up and went unto Datham and Eberim, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart. 
I pray you from the tents of these wicked men mm -hmm. and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all of their sins. So they got up from the tabernacle of uh, Korah, Datum, and Abr Abram and on every side. And Dathan and Abram came out and stood in the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses cried, Hereby ye shall know that Yahweh has sent me to do all these works, mm -hmm. for I have not done them of mine own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then Yahweh hath not sent me. But if Yahweh make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that uh, appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked Yahweh. I think it was in Exodus, but uh, don't worry about it. It was in Exodus, yeah. After they uh, built the calf. I don't know if he draw a line in sand, but Yahweh um, told Moses to... Um, to separate them, and he slew, and he slew them because they um, built that golden calf. But um, that's just another witness um, in the law showing that Yahweh, you can't worship some, you can't worship something and then say, "Oh, okay, I'm gonna worship Yahweh." Also, it doesn't work like that. Keep um, going back to. We're, yeah, we're in 1821, First Kings. Mm -hmm. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt you between two opinions? Mm -hmm. If Yahweh be Elohim, follow him. Mm -hmm. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of Yahweh. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it into pieces, and lay it on the wood, and put no fire under it, and I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under it. And call ye on the name of your gods, and mm -hmm. I will call on the name of Yahweh. So right now they're having a competition between <laughs> whose God is going to come and save them. Mm -hmm. And we know, um, what's that, get me uh, Jeremiah 10 and 5. We talk about the gods because a lot of people, um, they can uh, worship anything, you know, that God. I know in India, there was a, I saw a um, program where they were worshiping a cow because to them, the cow was sacred. Right. And so they come up to the cow and they put the money on the cow and all the rest of that. But a cow can't do anything to you, no matter how hard you pray. Just like uh, the statue of Mary or anything, it can't do nothing for you. Um, yeah. Go to, go to Jeremiah 10 and 5. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Yahweh, mm -hmm. thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Yahweh's name is great, and Yahweh is, is, is might. So you can't, oh my goodness, it's just... Oh my goodness, it's so much that we can be thankful for that Yahweh is showing us about himself and about all these other gods out here that people worship. And, and Yahweh is, he is all, he is all in all. Just like we have this Yahweh drawn around all the edges of this chart. Like Yahweh is, you can't go outside of Yahweh. All these gods that they have within the whole creation dwells within Yahweh. So <laughs> he is the creator of, of everything. So when you worship uh, uh, something that is made, that sort, what that is made, that comes from Yahweh, that source that comes from Yahweh. So why worship the creature instead of worship, worshiping the creator, the one who created that creature? And that's what Yahweh is. He pulled us out from that and... It's, it's so many witnesses, even in the Law and the Prophets, showing us over and over again how, you know, they still worship in these idols and how Yahweh still needs to pull us from out of that because that's how our mind was before we came into class. You know, whether you believe or not, it might have been yourself. It might have been, you know, whatever church that you came from. But still, we need to take heed and look at these witnesses that Yahweh is giving us so that we would not be between two opinions so we would not be you know stuck in that same mindset of just just worshiping anything that's not of Yahweh you know what I mean um I can't even I oof, I'm getting kind of stuck here it was it was so much that that I read here and 
<sighs> it's like you read something and you was like, okay, I'm going to go this, but that's not the way y'all want you to go. <laughs> um, it was something that was in here that that um, I did see, and then I'll uh, take my seat. Where do we stop at? We stopped at 24. Oh, I'm sorry. In Jeremiah or Kings? In Kings. Kings, we stopped at 24. Okay, so um, here, I mean, we can go on and on about, um, you know, what's going on. But the point I was trying to um, bring out with this, um, where are we at? At 24. You can find it. What do you want? What are you going for? It was, it was, it was, it was the gospel being preached within this, um, when they were, um, worshiping the, um, the, when they were trying to call upon their okay. gods. Yeah. So I guess we can keep reading and yeah, then I interrupt and yeah. The next couple of verses are about when they called on the, yeah, when they call upon their gods. So he said, um, on 24, he said, and call ye on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of Yahweh and the God that answereth by fire, let him be God or mm -hmm. call him. And the people answered and said, it is well spoken. So um, the caption says, Jehovah versus Baal in my Bible. <laughs> um, and Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first, for you are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. Mm -hmm. They took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon. Yeah, saying, that's, that's where it was, yeah. Yep, morning even yeah. until noon. O oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice. That reminds me, I'm sorry, that reminds me, like, um, I'm, I grew up in the church, and um, like I said, I'm just so thankful to not be in that, because every time I go, it's just a reminder that, oh my gosh, I'm so happy that Yahweh put me from that. Um, they go to service from, like, early in the morning to later on in the afternoon, and they do all this singing, and it's drawn out over and over and over again. It's just a long service, all day long, so like 7 o'clock at night. So this is what <laughs> it reminds me of. They're calling on bail mm -hmm. from morning to evening to, you know, it's, oh, my goodness. It, like I said, it don't matter how hard you pray, it's not going to do anything for you. Keep going. Okay, so we're at 26. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning and even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, mm -hmm. nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he's talking, or he's mm -hmm. pursuing, or he is journeying, or her peradventure he sleeps and must be awake. Mm -hmm. So he must—he must have been sleeping. He's busy. Yeah. <laughs> so he's busy. <laughs> and they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets until the blood gushed out upon them. So I guess they're supposed to be sacrificing their blood yeah. to mm -hmm. try to get him to mm -hmm. come down and light the bullock right. on fire and it came to pass when midday was passed they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice mm -hmm. that there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded and elijah said unto all the people come near me and all the people came near unto him and he repaired the altar of yahweh that was broken down and elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of jacob mm -hmm. unto mm -hmm. whom the word of yahweh came saying israel shall be thy name and with the stones he built the altar in the name of Yahweh. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Mm -hmm. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran around about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Yahweh Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art Elohim in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Yahweh, hear me, that this people may know that thou art Yahweh Elohim, and thou hast turned their heart back again. Then so he always always using a prophet, he always using someone to glorify his name or to um, manifest his name um, throughout um, the earth plane or, you know, throughout um, who, whoever gods that they were worshiping. Like he used Moses to go up against Pharaoh so that his name would be declared throughout all the earth. And it's just a repeat and repeat. And Yahweh's always... always um, Showing us that his name will be glorified no matter, you know, 
um, whatever gods that, you know, they can try to come up against them, they're not going to prevail. Keep going. 38. Then the fire of Yahweh fell and consumed the bird sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces mm -hmm. and said, Yahweh, he is the Elohim. Yahweh, he is the Elohim. So Yahweh, like he, like he said, his name will be glorified. Mm -hmm. And all the nations of the earth will worship Yahweh. Um, just like in uh, Matthew 24, chapter, all the nations of the earth. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you believe in Yahweh or not. You're still going to bow. Yeah, you're right. still, it, like some people say, um, uh, I can't see it. Well, I don't, I can't see what you're talking about. Well, it doesn't matter if you see it or not. Yahweh's purpose is still going to continue, regardless if you believe it or not. Like, um, so we, we might not see everything. We might not catch every, uh, um, principle or whatever, but it's there regardless if Yahweh has revealed it to us or not. It's there. It's just y'all Yahweh's time to reveal it to us, you know, so, um, it's, it's so much that we can talk about, and oh my goodness, you could just keep going on and on <laughs> about Yahweh, and I'm just so thankful um, that I just see anything about his purpose and plan, because like I said, a lot of people don't see this, but it takes Yahshua within you to sit you down and to open up your your heart and open up your mind to understand these things and if we see anything about this purpose pattern of plan be thankful because it is a gift mm -hmm. and it is a, a blessing you know um let me see uh oh my goodness there's so much i had on my mind but then my mind went blank <laughs> um just for me first corinthians um, 15 and 1. Cause when you talk about, when you talk about seeing these things, seeing the principle, seeing the death, burial and resurrection of Yahshua, that's, that's the, a blessing within itself. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, you know, um, it doesn't matter if you don't know everything, just a little bit that, you know, in this class is so much more than what the world has so you can compare that to what a, a pastor that has been going to uh, a school that you know they have their scholar degree or their bible degree you you still know so much more than that pastor that has been going to school you know what i mean it's it's um mm -hmm. what is that they scripture yeah and they go a long time the yeah. the i think it was the the wisdom or the um the wise will he will make the wise foolish and then it was a scripture talking about the mm -hmm. the weakness of Yahweh. It's still what is it? I just oh my goodness, I do not remember this. The foolishness of Yahweh is um, wiser than men or something? Mm-hmm. I don't know where it is. First Corinthians one and pick it up about Okay, I got it. First Corinthians. I'm sorry, I don't know these. Um, you got 15 right now. First Corinthians 1 and 18. First Corinthians 1, 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Mm -hmm. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of Yahweh. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. He will destroy the wisdom of the wise, so that... Um, that right there within itself would just show show you that it doesn't matter what degree you have. You can go to a, a Bible school. You can go study in Egypt. You can study the Hebrew book. I know a lot of people do that. They say, well, I'll get a Hebrew book. It does not matter if Yahweh doesn't show it to you. You still won't know. You still won't have no understanding. You can study up all you want, but it takes Yahshua within you to reveal these things. And that is that is a gift. And that is... The, the grace that he have to, to show us these things. Is there anything there? Yeah, um, keep going. Keep yeah. going. 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not Yahweh made foolish the wisdom of this world? And then and then the scribes were the one who um saying that uh Yah that Yahshua was blaspheming and that he was um 
he didn't know what he was talking about. And because they called themselves the priests or the high priests, they were the ones who felt like, you know, they were dressed up all nice and I know more than you. And that's how they feel even now to this day. When we come to them, we talk to them about this mm -hmm. gospel. Mm -hmm. But where is the, right there is what it says. It says, hath, um, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Mm -hmm. Has not Yahweh made foolish the wisdom of this world? He's made them think, he's made them foolish. Mm -hmm. And, and us coming into this class, you know, no matter how long you have come, you have so much more knowledge of your creator than what the world has. And that is such a blessing. That is a gift for us to be able to see these things. Do I have anything else holding? Yeah, just go. Okay, keep going. Just, just one you want to keep going? Go ahead. 21. For after that, in the wisdom of Yahweh, the world by wisdom knew not Yahweh. It pleased Yahweh by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The world by wisdom knew not Yahweh. So that, that included us. I'm not going to say everybody else, but that included us. So we did not know Yahweh until Yahweh set us, brought us in here and set us down. And even though um, sometimes you invite somebody to class and they'll say, oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'll be there. How many times you see some people say, oh, I'm coming to class. They never come. Right. They can't come. They can't come unless Yahweh brings them in. It doesn't matter. That's just like us. We cannot. We have could not come until Yahweh brought us in here and set us down. My church was on the same street as class. The church that I grew up in, on the same street. Yes, on Nebraska Avenue. How many times did I pass class growing up? I was in church since I was 11 or 12 years old. Didn't know nothing about class. Until Yahweh opened up my heart, opened up my mind, told me, Tara, get a Bible, go get uh, 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 your laptop, go get a paper, and everything that you see, you're going to write it down, and you're going to look in the Bible. I had this Bible for over about, about 10 years. Yahweh's name is all in this Bible. Yahweh would not allow me to read this. I'm dead serious. He would not allow me everything in here. Even the prophet's name, it's showing in the, in the footnotes what it means. Uh, Joel, Obadiah, Hezekiah, Zechariah, Yahweh's name is there. He would not allow me to read this Bible. Every time I picked it up, I was... <laughs> Every time. Until I came to class and I opened it up and his name is right there in front yeah. of my face. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm telling you about the power of Yahweh. He, he will cause you to do that. He will cause you to sit down. He will, and if you are his son, he's going to make you. Mm -hmm. Just like the scripture says, no one can, can uh, snatch you out of Yahshua. I don't even know the, what's the scripture word, but you can't, they can't take you from Yahshua once you are his. Yes. So, it's, um, Yahweh, his, his power and his, his might is... is there's no, no God, uh, there's nothing else that can go up against Yahweh. And we know this within the, the uh, witnesses that he has given us, all the gods that they are worshiping, Yahweh destroyed the gods, destroyed those idols. And even now, all those idols that they're worshiping, the, the statue, the, um, we see the churches burning, Notre Dame, all these things that's going on in the earth plane, Yahweh is destroying, the, showing us and they destroy, he is destroying these things. So that's a witness for us to keep our eyes on Yahweh mm -hmm. through Yahshua, because that's our only hope of salvation. I don't have nothing else to say, but <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot to say, but <laughs> it just left. But I'm just if, if I can say anything else, <laughs> just keep your eyes on Yahshua. That is our only hope of salvation. Hallelujah. <laughs>
pleasure to always, you know, to be here and to have anything to say about our Heavenly Father. And um, I enjoyed her comments of the first speaker. And, um, you know, as she said and talked about, you know, this creation and everything in it is pointing to Yahweh. It's for our learning, for our admonition to bring us unto our Savior, unto Yahshua. And everything points to him. Um, and it's a beauty that he has provided a way for us to understand him. And he's made it simple. He's broken it down so that we'd be able to understand him. As Latara was talking about making foolish the wisdom of the wise. Because man thinks, right? We see the witnesses all the time that they know so much more than God, right? Um, and so um, he makes foolish that wisdom. Because it doesn't take that kind of wisdom to know your creator. Our founder had a sixth grade education. So, and there have been many people in this organization, too, that have difficulty reading and things like that, but can understand this gospel. So it's not meant uh, for, for someone who thinks they have all this knowledge. And he showed that all down through the scriptures, as, as Latara was talking about. So let's go back to the scripture lesson, Matthew, the 24th chapter. And let's get um, around verse... Twelve. Let's go to eleven. Matthew twenty-four, eleven. Mm -hmm. And many false prophets shall rise. Mm -hmm. See, what does it say? Say, read that again, loud, please. And many false prophets shall rise. Many false prophets, mm -hmm. not a few. Mm -hmm. He said, many false right. prophets. Go on. Shall rise and shall deceive many. No, they're, he's going to deceive a few. Mm -hmm. It says many. He's going to deceive many. That's a whole lot of people. They say there's 7 billion people on the face of the earth. And we have all been deceived. And all of us can testify to that. Witness to that. Every single one of us in here at one time had thoughts, theories, concepts, and opinions that were not aligned with our creator. And he's made a way for them to be aligned with him. Let's see how he's gone about to do that. But continue in Matthew. Mm -hmm. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Now, does that sound pleasant? Endure. He that shall endure until the end. Does that sound pleasant? No. Not at all. Enduring does not sound pleasant at all. So it's not going to be, he's not saying it may be easy. But, you know, there's going to be some things, some stumbling blocks in there. Because that mystery of iniquity also has a job. Yahweh has given him a job to do, and he is very, 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 as I tell my students, very, 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 very good at it. Very good at it. So, <clears throat> enduring until the end. And as Latara was talking about, we see the signs. That they're all around us, things happening in the earth plane. Again, they're all witnessing to Yahweh. But go on. In this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. What is he talking about, this gospel? What does he mean? This gospel, go on though. Shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. This gospel should be preached in all the world, all the world, for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. What is the gospel he's talking about? Let's get 1 Corinthians 15. Let's get John 5 and 39. Luke 24, and I know I'm running them down, so hopefully uh, and somebody can help if, if I forget, please, because I'm getting them off my, out of my mind, eight, uh, Isaiah 8 and 20. So 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, mm -hmm. if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. 
For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Yahshua Messiah died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that okay, that's good. Thank you. And I wanted that read without being interrupted, <laughs> so or not without me interrupting. So according to the scriptures, he was that the Messiah died, buried, and rose again the third day. Again, he rose again. This was a hard thing, you know, to under, how did he rise again, again, the third day, according to the scriptures. Let's go um, to John 5 and 39. John 5 and 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. Now this is in the red letter, I believe, in Bibles, King James Version of the Bible. So this is Jesus or Yahshua talking here. He, the world would say Jesus as it was talked about. But, okay. And they are, and they are they which testify. So, Yahshua is telling people to search the scriptures. Because the scriptures are going to testify of him. So, all that Torah was talking about there in Kings. All that is going to be testifying of Yahshua the Messiah. So, the scriptures we come to find out are the first five books of the Bible which are called the law and attributed to Moses. The next 34 books of the Bible called the prophets or the testimony, law and the prophets, testimony, are attributed to the prophets, of course. So we have 39 books of the Old Testament. Let's get for me Psalms 40 and 7 before you get the, uh, the Luke. And actually, while somebody's getting that, get the Luke for me, Luke 24. So Yahshua said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they that testify of me. So they're testifying, the scriptures are testifying of your Savior. Psalms 40 and 7. Mm -hmm. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. 39 books. The volume of the books. The volume of the book. He comes and know the volume of the book. Isaiah 8 and 20 and then Luke 24. Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Yep. So they have to speak a certain way. I'll phrase it like that. They have to speak according to the law and the testimony. If they don't speak according to that, if the scriptures, if the ministers, the preachers, whoever it is, us, don't speak according to the law and the prophets, it's because there is no light in them, no truth. Yahshua says, I am the way, the life, and the truth. Let's also get for me, while I got Luke 24, um, get for me John 6, uh, worship him in spirit and in truth. How your creator wants you to worship him, because the world out here has you thinking you can kneel down. You can make the sign of the cross, and that's going to satisfy your creator. That's showing that you're worshiping him. Uh, Luke 24 and 25. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart, to believe that all that the prophets have spoken, ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he is founded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Where did he begin? At Moses. Moses and all the prophets. So he's telling you, he's directing you where to go. After his death, burial, resurrection, John was before his death, burial, and resurrection. He's saying the same thing. His story doesn't change. Okay, what do we have? We got John 14. Okay. Yahweh is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him. You must worship him in spirit and in truth. He doesn't want you kneeling down. He doesn't making the sign of a cross. What does that mean? What does it mean? People do it, and what does it mean? <laughs> Ask somebody sometime, what does it mean? What, why do you do that? What are, you know? So we are to worship him in spirit and in truth. And he's given us a way to do that through the law and the prophets, the law and the testimony. And he went about to establish a purpose 
an, a pattern and a plan of salvation through the law and the prophets. And all of it is pointing to Yahshua the Messiah as has been talked about. So let's go on in Matthew. Was there anything else holding? No. All right, thank you. And let's go on in, back into Matthew. So he said, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So go on and let's read a little bit more. Uh, I already went through I'll pick it up there again. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Uh -huh. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Uh -huh. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Uh -huh. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Mm -hmm. Those days shall be short. And Yahweh has given us these witnesses today, this day in the earth plane, that the days were even shortened. He had an event take place uh, not too long ago that um, when the tsunami hit and they talked about its shortening time. So Yahweh gives us witnesses. I was looking at um, yesterday, um, uh, in Florida, the sinkholes, and it talks about, um, they were talking about all the sinkholes in Florida, and, and mainly on the West Coast, and how they're swallowing up houses and things like that, and Latar was talking about Moses drawing that line in the sand, you know, and uh, it swallowed up the the children of Israel, the ones that were not on Yahweh's side. And Yahweh gave us a witness of that. The sinkhole opened up and swallowed up a man. But they showed this yesterday. There were all these events on it's uh, one of the programs, you know, all and just swallowing up whole houses, the sink cars, everything, every just destroyed. So he gives us these witnesses. But again, it's all pointing, it's him. It's all pointing to, to Yahshua. So how did he said, beginning at Moses and the prophets, um, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So you go back here to Moses. The people in the world just celebrated Easter. Your Easter appears one time in the Bible. One time it talks, it says the word Easter. We talked about it already. There is no, it, it means nothing to Yahshua. Nothing. But here you go back, you find out down here that Yah, Moses was born under a death decree. He was saved alive. He was raised up in Pharaoh's household. And I'm cutting it up. And through a series of events, after he was raised up, he wound up out here in the land of, in, in the wilderness of Sinai, in the land of Midian. And he kept the sh uh, flock of his father-in-law, Jethro. And he comes to the backside of the mountain of Yahweh, and he sees a phenomenal sight. He sees a bush being burned, but it's not being consumed. He says, now I will turn aside and see this great, great sight, why the bush burned, but why it's not being consumed. And Yahweh, at this uh, point, talks to Moses and gives him some instructions. He tells Moses he's going to send them back down into the land he's wanted in, and he's going to deliver up the children of Israel. Yahweh had made a promise to Abraham some 400 years before mm -hmm. that all these things were going to take place and happen, that the Abraham seed was going to go down into Egypt. They were going to put into, be put into hard bondage. But at a certain time, Yahweh's appointed time, which is what Yah, Yah, uh, Taro has been talking about, Yahweh's appointed time. She couldn't see this before. It was appointed time. Her time to see it, or any of us, can't see this until it's our appointed time. But yet, the, at the appointed time, Yahweh was going to bring them up. How? How did he say? With the mighty hand. With the mighty hand, because his name was going to be declared throughout all the earth. So, Moses 
um, has some questions for God. One of them is, what is your name? Yahweh at this time gives Moses his name because, again, it's going to be declared throughout all the earth plane. So here we have a principle, Moses, with a death down here. Moses is buried in an ark that his mother placed him in, and he's resurrected up by Pharaoh's daughter and, like I said, saved alive and raised right up in the very household of the person that wanted to kill him to take his life so we have a death we have a burial and we have a resurrection here taking place and so this is again we talk about it pointing to Yahshua search the scriptures for in them you think they testify of you you think they're about you but they testify of me we carry it on over to show how it's going to testify of Yahshua the Messiah how he says first Corinthians he's going to die He's going to bury and he's going to rise again the third day. Death, burial, resurrection. Get for me um, precept upon precept, line upon line. That's how this gospel goes and that's how we can get an understanding of it. Because it's not all haphazard. This is not happening for uh, this reason and that for that reason. It's all happening for Yahweh to show us Yahweh to join the pieces together and again Tara mentioned you may not get it all in in it, you may not understand something here but so and get for me um Hebrews 11 I think it is for Isaiah 28 and verse 9 whom shall he teach knowledge? Mm -hmm. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the mill and drawn from the breast. Mm -hmm. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Mm -hmm. Line upon line. And he gives it to us here. A death line. A burial line. A resurrection. Death, burial, resurrection. Go on. Line up a line. Mm -hmm. Here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Mm -hmm. To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith he may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Yeah. Yet they, Tara talked about that. Yet they would not hear. You know, so this is a repetition. Everything she said is, you know, is the same thing we're all saying, maybe just a little differently. But so line, he, line upon line, precept upon precept. That's how this, how we're getting understanding. And that's how things have to be taught to us, right? Even in school, it's line upon line. You learn a little bit here, a little bit there. That foundation has to be solid, though, because that's why we have kids in remedial classes, because that foundation has not been laid. Right? They didn't get it. They didn't catch it. They didn't understand it then. You know, so they have to you have to go back and reteach it and 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 go over it until it's solid for them. But line upon line, precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Here a little and there a little. What else? Yes. No, I'm sorry. We are compassed about. I'm sorry. I might have called it wrong. Is it twelve? I think it might be twelve. Hebrews twelve. Yes. Therefore, mm -hmm. yeah, therefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily. We are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Compassed about. What does that mean? Compa it's all around us. Mm -hmm. We have the story of Jonah, a death, a burial, a resurrection. It talks about with Jonah, he was compassed about. Let's get that. Because all of those stories, it's not about Jonah. It's about Yahshua. But he uses different um, things or events or people or whatever that are going to uh, get our attention. You know, it's just like with us, uh, uh, any of us. We have different interests, right? So he uses, because that's what he's talking about when he talks about he'll make foolish the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing that understanding. Their understanding, because they, they think it's too simple or they think it's too easy, but he uses what, it's, what he knows it's going to take to get us. Yes. 
Just, yeah. So what I want what it was compassed about. Like, we're going to chop it up. Because with Jonah, we know. Jonah decided to go a different way than Yahweh had wanted him to go at first. So Yahweh causes this big storm to come up. And uh, Jonah gets thrown overboard by the mariners. And a big fish is there to swallow him up. And I want it where he's compassed about. The waters can pass me about, even to the soul. Mm -hmm. The death closed me around about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars were, was about me forever. Ye has thou brought up my life from corruption. Oh, Yahweh, my Elohim. Mm -hmm. But compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, because when we're here in this gospel, every which way we turn, what do we see? Every which way, what do we see? What are we looking at? Yahweh. Yahweh. Every what we cannot now with the understanding that we have, we can't turn any other way, right? Mm -hmm. Every way we turn, no matter what it is, small little thing. Even Yahweh gives us that witness, right? And it has to be that way. Otherwise, we'd be no different than the organizations out here in the world. And we're not bashing him. I grew up in church, was a Sunday school teacher, believe it or not. I can't believe it. <laughs> Didn't have a clue what I was talking about. But you know, Yahweh did that to prepare me for this. Because now, not that it matters, but now I do know a little bit about these stories. Now, the, the way that it matters, let me rephrase that. The way that it matters is now I can understand the stories that I taught. <laughs> you know? Not having a clue before, but now they make sense to me. Because before, I'm up here teaching, supposedly, right? Sunday school, teenager. I had no clue what this was, what the true meaning was of these stories. But now I do. Now I can see what they mean and how they're pointing to Yahshua and how they're about him. So we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, everything he gives you. And don't you say, you know, you're driving along, you see something, and oh, man, I see. I see. I understand. That's how he gives you. We talked about the moderation, that revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. He, you know, he just reveals it and makes it clearer to you. Did I have anything holding? Nothing holding? So here with Moses, we have the uh, death a burial and a resurrection third day according to the scriptures and that's how Yahshua comes in he's all these events talk about a death here um, with Adam he was placed in a deep sleep sleep synonymous with death right because I know you know I had a, a pet dog you know and I had to put him to sleep right mm -hmm. so we use it synonymously all the time you know you I know I go to sleep and sometimes what am I dead I'm always dead tired actually <laughs> dead tired you know and I don't know what's going on around me so you have that death um Eve is buried within him and she's resurrected out Yahweh performs that operation takes his his uh, rib and his womb and and, and resurrects Eve. So we have a death, a burial, and a resurrection. And all, all of this, again, just pointing to Yahshua, come past about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Here we have the story with Noah, a death. The death of um, Methuselah happened at this time when Yahweh had given Moses, Noah, this vision here of the flood. So we have a death they're buried in this ark, and that ark resurrects on Mount Ararat. So here, a death, a burial, and a resurrection. This is the gospel being preached. Mm -hmm. The death, this is the gospel. It's, you know, and they, they, your ministers out here will tell you it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they say the gospel is. But what did Yahshua say the gospel, or what did Pete, Paul say the gospel was? First Corinthians, back again. Yeah. What did he say it was? This is how we get the understanding. And it's through the grace and mercy of Yahshua. First Corinthians 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto, I declare you, unto you, he's saying, the gospel which I preach unto you, 
which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep Ye are saved. saved. This is how you're saved. That minister says, no, you got to bring me your money. No, you have to do so many Hail Marys and our fathers, right? Wherever, the, you know, some organizations. You have to take communion and this, you know, all kinds of things. Man's mind just conjures up all kinds of things. But this is how you are saved. Say it, read it again, please. By which also you are saved. By which also you are saved. Now, he declared this. Go on. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Mm -hmm. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I received, how that Yahshua the Messiah died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, mm -hmm. and that he was seen of Cephas, and then of the twelve. So he died, he buried, and he rose again the third day. That's the gospel. That's the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. And he's preached that gospel all down through the ages and dispensations. So here we have um, the children of Israel. Here, they're down in Egypt. They're in bondage to some Pharaoh some 400 years. So they're down here. Um, Pharaoh puts out that death decree. Yahweh... A death, a burial here, it talks about, Yahweh tells them, gives them a prescribed way to come up out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now, the Egyptians thought that the children of Israel would join another nation and rise up against Egypt and slay them or, you know, overtake them. But that wasn't, see, man's, let's get that. <laughs> uh, my thoughts are not your thoughts, Isaiah 55. So that's not what um, Yahweh had in mind. That's not what Yahweh's plan was. That's not his pattern or plan of salvation. That wasn't Yahweh's plan, that the children of Israel would join another nation. And he caused this to happen. He caused this nation to become mighty because they were lively births, it talks about, were happening down here. These births were happening so quick that the midwives were saying they couldn't even get to the, to the women in time. You know, when Pharaoh was wondering why all these boy babies running around after he had put out a death decree, you know, and he sees all these little children children running around. He's like, what's going on? You know, but that's Yahweh's plan. He had this. So, because they couldn't get to him. And he rose up that nation, caused that nation, Israel to, to, to be what it is. And so, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Your neither ways. Are, neither are your ways my ways, saith Yahweh. Mm -hmm. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Higher, higher. So are my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So they, it wasn't what they thought. So Yahweh had a pattern or a plan of salvation here. So they're down here under this death decree. They had to take out a lamb. They had to take the blood of that lamb, strike it on the top of the doorpost, the two side posts, and they're dipping from a basin of blood, making four points of blood. They had to be ready to leave up out of Egypt at the time of Yahweh appointed. Be ready to go. So there's a death down here. Pharaoh's trying to kill off Yahshua. It's not going to work. They come through the. They come to the Red Sea. Yahweh parts the waters of the Red Sea. They go through on dry ground. First uh, Corinthians 10th chapter. They go through on dry ground. A death down here. A burial, and they resurrect here into the wilderness. First Corinthians 10 and 1. Through four, about. Now I call myself to teach you. Is that? No, is I it? Got second, sorry. <laughs> First Corinthians. Ten and one. Ten and one. Well, oh, moreover, brother. brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Mm -hmm. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. It says they were baptized. So a burial. What do they do when they baptize people? These The churches and stuff. Don't they bury them? 
in the water. They Some of them take them to rivers and lakes and things like that, even. I was at the beach one day, and they were doing it in the beach. Yeah, they were baptizing people and dunking them. Yes. So, but we have a death, a burial, and a resurrection. Again, they resurrect three days' journey up here into the wilderness of Sinai. So, a death, a burial, a resurrection. This is Yahweh's pattern or plan of salvation. This is the gospel being preached. So, here, then you have this tabernacle here. You have. Uh, and again, all of this pointing up to Yahshua. So you have this tabernacle. They're told to come out here into the wilderness and to clean up, and Yahweh's going to speak down laws and ordinances to them. Come to find out, you know, I taught Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. There are 600 and some odd laws and ordinances that the children of Israel were given. And it was the children of Israel and the children of Israel only. There were no Gentiles. Yah had, Yahweh considers Jews and Gen not even Jews. Hebrews, Israelites, and Gentiles. And there were no Gentiles invited to this ceremony here. It was the Jews and the Jews only. And Yahweh spoke down laws and ordinances to them. But what he was setting them up for to dwell among them that Yahweh was going to dwell right among them. And they were to build this tabernacle. And this tabernacle is the pattern of everything as the moderation talked about. It's the pattern of everything. So here they build this tabernacle so that Yahweh can dwell among them. Down here in this court roundabout, we have this altar of sacrifice down here where a death has to take place. A death. Something has to die in order for us to live to this very day, whether it's an animal or whether it's a plant. It has to die in order for us to live. You have a laver here of water in which the sacrifices and the priests were washed. You have a burial. This is a, a principle of a burial. And you have a cup of holy anointing here, a cup of holy anointing oil here that is poured upon the priest to quicken him to minister throughout this tabernacle because it had to be flawless. This tabernacle is where Yahweh was going to dwell. It had to be, operate flawlessly, and it carries on over to so many things that I don't want to, I want to try to stay on track here. So we have a death, a burial, and a, a principle of resurrection here taking place. We have three primary vessels in this tabernacle, in this court roundabout, three primary vessels in this holy place, and a three-in-one configuration in this most holy place. So again, the principles of a death, a burial, a resurrection, and a principle of three. This is the gospel being preached, and it carries on down. So we want to see how Yahshua, how it comes about, because again, he said it's pointing to him. These things are testifying of him. Luke 24 and 25. What does it say again? Luke 24 and 25. Yes. John 5 and, I don't know. Luke 24 and 25. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have mm -hmm. spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he is founded unto them in all the mm -hmm. scriptures, the, the things, things concerning himself. himself. That's what we have to keep in mind because I know I was taught, oh, and, and you see it to this very day. You see books all over the place, books to help you feel better, right? <laughs> feel good books. But how could it make you feel good paying $25? That's not going to make me feel good. <laughs> but we fall into these traps. We fall into it. We're going to pay money for a book to make us feel good. These things are testified. This, you know, this is how Yahweh is showing us different things about himself. But these, this book is testifying of Yahshua the Messiah, how he died, how he buried, how he was buried, and how he rose again the third day, and he did it over and over again. The children of Israel here in this tabernacle in the wilderness, they had to take out a lamb. It was a lamb they had to take out here. I'm sorry, down here in Egypt. It was a lamb they had to take out. And they had to take the blood of that lamb, as I talked about, put it on the top of the uh, doorpost, two side posts, dipping from a basin of blood. Yahshua the Messiah, he is 
let's get um let's get revelation and you know that's the beauty of this gospel because it can go from genesis to revelation and it's all about him it's all about him matthew 27 okay okay matthew 27 and verse 50 yashua when he had cried again with a loud voice yielded up the spirit okay thank you i want to get revelations though where he's the lamb slain from the foundation of the world is that in revelation yeah, eight. okay and all the twelve on the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life the lamb slain from the foundation yes of the world. Uh, matthew 3 and 13 I think it's three and thirteen, where John calls him out as the lamb. No, that's. Where you, you, you well then, yeah. you, you, is that not? John one. John one. Okay. John one and twenty-one. Okay. Yes, thank you. John one twenty-one. Yeah. So here in Revelations, he's called the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, Yahshua. He's the Lamb slain. Now this is in Revelation. This is what people would say the end. And it's all, ooh, 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 so, ooh, ooh, ooh. Scared, yes. But he's the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Go on. John 129. Yes. The next day John seeth Yahshua coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of Yahweh, which taketh away the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. This is he of whom I said. The Lamb of Yahweh who taketh away the sins of the world. Let's get also, um, let's establish what Yahshua's mission really was. Matthew 5 and 17. But John is pointing him out as the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So we have that principle. So if he's slain, that's a death, right? That's a death. He's slain from the foundation. You slain, that's a death. Go on, though. Matthew 5 and 17. Mm -hmm. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Yep. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So he came to fulfill all those scriptures that were written about him in the law of Moses and in the prophets. That's what he's doing. He's not instituting anything, a Christian of anything, no Christian anything. There's no such thing. He's not instituting anything. It was all set up back here with the children of Israel, with Moses, and with through through Yahshua, really, back here too. But that's a different story. But So it was already established. Baptism was already established. We read in 1 Corinthians, they, were, they all came, they were all baptized unto Moses. 1 Corinthians 10 says they were all baptized unto Moses. So baptisms were happening long before Yahshua came on the scene. Long before he came on the scene. There was a baptism. The earth was inundated in water. That was a baptism. You're immersed. Some Bibles say you're immersed. Some say you're baptized. Same thing. Synonyms, right? Synonyms. So we have that taking place. So Yahshua, was there anything else? All right. So Yahshua, he's the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. Of the earth. So that that's a death taking place. He comes to John to be baptized of him. Let's get that. That's I think Matthew, isn't it? Three thirteen. So he comes to John to be baptized. Matthew three and thirteen. Then cometh Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan unto mm -hmm. John to be baptized of him. Here we have it depicted here. Mm -hmm. Go on. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of mm -hmm. thee, and comest thou to me. And that's a whole story there, why all that's taken place, but go on. And Yahshua answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Becometh us. He said it again. Yeah. Fulfill. He came to fulfill. He didn't come to start to institute, to begin, all of those words, synonyms also. He did, he did the opposite. He did the antonym. He came to fulfill it, end it, bring it to an end, complete it. And we had that all wrong, all backwards. But here, so we have a death. We have a burial. 
He's baptized. We also, okay, let me do it this way, though. He's a death, a burial, and we know he resurrected the third day according to the scriptures. We also have, of course, him being placed on this cross with four points of blood, uh, uh, nails in his hands, in his feet, and a crown of thorn around his head. So we have four points of blood here pointing to Yahshua the Messiah as we had four points of blood on this altar here where that sacrifice was placed and they had to take the blood of that lamb or that sacrifice and place it on the four horns of this altar. Again, all of this pointing up to Yahshua. And you would say, you know, people ask, well, or they don't believe he had nails in his hands. Well, where are your nails? <laughs> so... We are compassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses. We can't, if we wanted to, right? That's what Jonah, Jonah couldn't run from it, could he? He tried, he tried, but that's witness for us to show us we cannot run from this. There's nowhere we're going to go. Where's the scripture? I think you like it. Where, whether shall thou go, right? <laughs> whether shall thou go? Where are you going to go? You can't get away from it. And if Yahweh, as Tara talked about, he brings you in, he sits you down, if he wants you to get this, you're going to get it. You're going to get it, and you're going to be here. You're going to be coming and coming, and you don't know why sometimes. Oh, I'm tired tonight. Oh, I hurt tonight. Oh, I don't feel good tonight. Right? We all did it, right? I worked hard. Sun up the sun down, right? Right? We work set up the sundown. Some of us, right? <laughs> you guys are fortunate, right? You did it already. You did it. You completed it. You fulfilled it, right? You still work. But some of you have fulfilled it. You completed it, right? And we're still doing it. <laughs> sun up the sundown, right? Tired, but we come. We still come. Yahweh brings us here to sit us down to learn about him. It's, it's for our learning. Did we get that? Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where are you going to go? Know where you can go. So it's best to, Latara said, what did you see? She said, be obedient. She said, she, I just might as well, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well just be obedient. Do what Yahweh says. So here again, this is Yahweh's pattern or plan of salvation. And again, death, burial, resurrection. That's what why we come. Because now we can honestly, truthfully believe in a resurrection, right? We can believe. We can not not let me let me rephrase that actually. Let's get um John 17 and 3. Let me, because I want to rephrase that. Because I don't want to say just believe. All right? We want to know. We know that there's a resurrection. Because we live it every day. We die, we bury, we raise again every day. Every night. I'm going to go home, take a shower, jump under the covers, right? Mm -hmm. Right? I try to lay on top sometime because it's like hot. You know, and stuff, but it's hard. I still got to kind of get under there, and then I'll stick a leg out sometimes <laughs> and put it back, you know. I got to be buried. I still got to be buried, So I'm, and I'm dead tired. So I lay down, right, dead tired, cover up, and in the morning, resurrect. Right? Start it all over again. Go on. John 17, 3. This is like eternal. And this is life eternal, that they might no. know thee. No. He didn't say believe. He does talk about believe on me who, um, who thou hast sent. But we might know. We have to know. That word know is an intimate understanding of your creator. Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare a, a son. No, to know, four-letter word, had no clue of the meaning behind it. No clue. Reading it all this time. No clue, but he wants us to know him. An intimate, personal relationship with your creator so that 
what is the purpose of all this? What is the purpose? So that we may be able to worship him how? In spirit, spirit, not any of this, kneeling down, getting up, hurting our knees, hurting our feet, all that, none of that, right? What did, none of that. No rosary beads, none of that is going to help. The world out here talks about, you know, and I did it. I did it in church all the time. We had the Last Supper, but it was never the Last Supper. So why do we call it that? Why? Why did we call it that? Ever. It was over and over. My church, we did it once a month, but I went to a Catholic school. They did it every day. They did it every day. So when we had to go, uh, you know, sometimes I had to go to mass and stuff, you know, and, and different holidays, Easter, like, and stuff like that, you know, and they, every day. So, but everyone does it differently, you know. Some do it weekly. Or we did it monthly. Some do it daily. Why is that? How could there be all these different ways when Yahshua says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's only one way. It talks about many are deceived. Many, many false prophets, and many are deceived. But he's given us a way to understand him. He's given us that pattern or plan of salvation, and it carries on through. We have, again, in this tabernacle, a death, a burial, and a resurrection, pointing to Yahshua's death, burial. He's buried in Joseph's new tomb, and he resurrects the third day. We just had beautiful, beautiful lectures about how is it three days. I work with a a gentleman, ESE, so I have an assistant. He asked me that question. How is it three days? He asked me that last Thursday. And I said, wow, Yahshua, this is what, how he gives us, he compasses us about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Of course, I couldn't stand there and hold a conversation about all that, (laughs) right? But I just, it just shows the power of Yahweh, just out of the blue. Ah, how is it three days? So, but we had a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lectures on that. How is it three days? But it is. He died, he buried, he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So all of this pointing up to Yahshua, all of the Bible stories that I thought were bedtime stories or just little events that this happened and that happened, all of it is pointing to our Savior to to solidify, if I can say it that way, or to... to, um, Let's get um, Colossians one and to 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 plant us firmly firmly on the ground to give us a foundation and you think about it here in Florida when I saw the um the pot the um sinkholes that is not a foundation we would want to build a house on that is not a foundation, and there are many of them. And I mean, they just opened up and swallowed up everything. Some of them are whole neighborhoods just swallowed up. One of them now swallowed up so much land, it has over 200 alligators they were talking about in there, in the pond, in the lake that it created. Like now it's like alligator heaven. <laughs> Created a habitat, you know, for the alligator. Yeah. And it's like, that is not a foundation we would want to build anything on. But this is a sure foundation. Yahweh, Yahshua, to build upon this foundation. And there is a scripture. Yes. But what am I thinking of? Um, No other laid. Do you know what I mean? I'm chopping it up. No other foundation can any man lay. Yes, yes, yes. No other foundation. So when you, and the beauty of this is you can go, if, if you have, if you're still going to church or going to a, 
a place of worship or something like that, ask some of these questions to your spiritual advisors and leaders or whatever. Ask them, how is it three days? How did Yahshua die very again? Why are they not using Yah Yahweh and Yahshua? Why are they still using Lord God and Jesus Christ? Jay is little over 400 years old. His name couldn't have been Jesus. It couldn't have been. Ask these questions and see what they tell you. And if they tell you this is God's business or you can't understand it, that's not true. Because um, you have to know. You have to know and you have to know now. Because this is our inheritance. This is our inheritance. This is what this is. Eternal life is our inheritance. And in order to get that, somebody had to die. Somebody has to die for you to get any inheritance. Usually that's how it happens, right? They die and they leave you this and that. This is our inheritance. Eternal life is our inheritance. 1 Corinthians uh, 1 and 26. Okay. Even the mysteries which have been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his... Uh, but I wanted the foundation. I want you can hold Colossians. I wanted the foundation. Okay. Let me pick it up at ten. According to the grace of Elohim, which is First Corinthians three and ten is what you said? You're picking it up at ten? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let every man take heed how he buildeth there a bond. Mm -hmm. For other, I think I might have an error here. Is it say for other foundations? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can, okay. yeah. Right. For Can other? no man lay, mm -hmm. then that is laid, which is Joshua. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's read that again. First Corinthians, what is it? Three and ten. First Corinthians three and ten. According to the grace of Elohim, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. For other foundations can no man lay than that is laid, which is Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. That's the only foundation. That's the foundation, Yahshua the Messiah. And now Colossians 1 and 26. Colossians 1 and 26. Mm -hmm. Even the mystery which have been hid from ages from generation, but now is made manifest to his sons. To whom, Yah, to whom Elohim would make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Yahshua in you, the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Kidney corrected that and said your only hope of glory. That's your only hope of glory. That's Colossians 1 and 26. <clears throat> so that's why we come down here, right? That's the reason we're here. Because Yahshua is our only hope of glory. The only hope. And he's given us this. He, he's given us this pattern. He's given us and explained to us and given us an understanding. that something we can understand. And again, we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. So you don't get it here with Adam. It's okay. It's okay. You may get it here with Noah. And the principle. But the principles do not change. What he has done is given us the manifestations of what we need. Because each and every one of us may need something different. We may not see it or get it that way. You know, so he's given us different manifestations so that no one is left out. And I'll leave it like that. No one he's called is left out. No one he's called. Because Yahshua talks about... He's kept all that he was given. None are lost except that son of perdition. So if this is, is for you, Yahweh has given us the pattern or the plan of salvation and made it simple so that a child could understand it. We have the principles are laid up and they don't change. The earth plane is a witness to it. A child is born by blood, water, spirit and those principles go on. So we have death, burial, resurrection on the third. We have blood, water, spirit. These principles carry on in the earth plane to this very day. This very day. And with that, I'll just say all praise is honor and glory. Go to Yahweh, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
just taken from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all times, now and ever, let us all say, Hallelujah. 